Apologies there. One of my um, uh, one of my windows has um, got stuck on the, on my other monitor. So anyway, sorry. Uh, let's keep to uh, uh, in, this is the um, the profile for cable. As I said, the, that that lovely move that we saw on pound in New Zealand. Very very quickly, if we look at the uh, what we see on the CSI with regard on the ten minute chart for. Uh, uh, for cable and I've, I've removed all the other uh, currencies so we can just see the move in the pound. We can see the pound is still actually moving higher but what's also happening is that the dollar is also selling off but um, so far the, the, the move in this pair really hasn't replicated what we've seen in the New Zealand and in fact if I just put the New Zealand on there we can see I've also had a, a, a cross on the pound New Zealand. What we're witnessing, what we've seen on the faster timeframes, as David said, is the pullbacks and corrections that you would expect um, you know, if on on a um, uh, on a slower on a slower time frame. It's, it's, it's the noise, if you like, the uh, that you would get in uh, um, in the move on the slower time frames. So I put the three currencies on the, the 10 minute CSI. The pound is st still moving higher. The dollar is still moving lower. We've had a cross on the uh, trade that David was looking at was actually on this little move here from the cross on the 10 minute. So, but as I said, it hasn't moved to the extent that we've seen on the pound New Zealand. If we just scroll back to the three minute chart, where well, this is the uh, this is the uh, uh, London uh, open as usual, the usual volatility candle. It's been trading around the volume point of control at uh, 30.78. It, uh, it attempted to uh, break higher. The volatility was triggered straight back into the spread of that candle. And Again, a test, a retest of the repop, and then up it goes. And this is the, this, as I said, this is the buying that's that's come into uh, the British pound. But as I said, not of, of similar strength that we have seen in the New Zealand. This is the pullback that we have at the moment reasonable amount of volume, but we have wicks to the bottom of the candle. So we know we've got price support coming in. So there is buying under those candles and What's also interesting is when we look at the uh, levels as displayed by the Camarilla, we know why we are temporarily pausing, if you like, because we've actually hit uh, this significant uh, price level at 31, uh, 31 it's, it's really 31, 3101. And it's kind of moving sideways. It's got to decide so to move higher. It's got to break through this level. The next question is, well, where is it likely to go next? Well, we have the R4 on uh, the Camarilla, which is at 31.32. If we move up that up to the hourly chart, we've actually got 31.21. So the R4 is a, uh, there's a, a corresponds with the R1 on the hourly chart. So it's a it's it, it's a reasonable price, you know. A price objective, which is you know, uh, reasonable to expect that this is where the pair is going to. But it will also, what it also tells us, because you have two important levels around the same price area, it also uh, potentially could lead to a strong, a stronger resistance. Back on the actual entry to this uh, trade, a little bit messy cables we can see here. We had this nice move higher, but look at the congestion. Um, you know, attempts to break uh, break higher, then uh, a pullback, but generally sort of trading sideways. The trend monitor picks that up as well. It was uh, bright blue, then it was uh, uh, dark red, bright blue. Then we had this little bit of uh, dark red here, certainly around uh, uh, around uh, the the London Open, which you know there's unusual nonsense that goes on there. But the actual entry point, the clean entry point, would have been once you clear this this high at a 3083 you've got uh, blue uh, blue trend dots you've also got a nice uh, blue clean uh, trend monitor it has paused we know why it's paused because of those two um, uh, uh, levels that we have seen on both the 10 minute and the hourly chart it's re it's reflected by the R3 on the 10 minute and the R1 coming up here on the one hour. So it's, if you like, when you have these resistance uh, levels, it means 
price is going to perhaps you know struggle a little bit and you're also working your way through all this uh, congestion here uh, that we see moving back here over this uh, uh, this chart here uh, but if it gets through that's a reasonable target that we can expect going back to the uh, the time chart we can see it very clearly this is the high that we've got to break there's a lot of volume going into this up candle here so it's a much slower um, a much uh, slower trade if you like certainly not the sort of you know fast move that we saw in uh, pound New Zealand we look at the daily chart as I said this was the this was the candle from Friday yep you would expect that a sell-off uh, off that candle we did get a sell-off early part of the trading session yesterday but it came back again so quite a lot of volume gone in under that and now it's uh, moving higher it is a strong signal and as I said earlier the seasonality for for the British uh, the British pound is you know August has always been uh, in the part based on data from the past has always been a time possibly to sell the British pound and yes we had an inkling of that and yes it, it provided a, a tradable opportunity based on that candle on Friday but we have to keep an open mind because the buyers clearly stepped back in uh, in uh, the US session and it was a, a very nice trade to um, you know to the long side but as always you know markets always move a lot slower uh, going higher I know pound New Zealand was probably um, you know a little bit of an a, a exception they always fall a lot faster but you know you just have to uh, read what you see on the charts look at the VPA signals if you have a Renko chart certainly use it to help you with your entries but more importantly to actually help you keep you in because once you're in these dots might change you know you may see a little red brick come in but essentially you know it looks like it just wants to keep uh, it wants to go higher and that's what the Renko will do that's the uh, I think we'll do a session possibly next time David just on non-time based charts we'll look at time based and we'll pay more attention to the non-time based charts where you have tick charts and certainly with our Renko charts because what they what the Renko chart does it 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 takes obviously you don't have any wicks to to the candles but it it really gives a shape to the price action that you see on the chart it really it explains in very simply those uh, areas of congestion you can see trends you can see the breakaways you can see the reversals we've got you see here we've got a, a love and we've got a, a, almost a quadru you've got a, a quadruple bottom if that were uh, if that were possible you had a double bottom there yes it didn't go very fast it came back and retested the other thing to bear in mind with support and resistance levels is you have to be um, a little bit flexible with them. Sometimes the price will will break through and then go back and, and hug it. But, you know, that is a very solid platform of support. It then went higher. And if you like, this is a continuation of, of the move that started way back here at, th at 30 uh, at 12. And it's a, a, a perfect example of what David was trying to explain on the time chart that no market moves from here to here in a straight line. You know, it, it will have little pullbacks, then it will have congestion, then it will attempt to move high. And here there was a genuine uh, attempt to actually reverse completely. Those attempts at reversals off this primary trend higher you also have to put them in the context of the time so if they occur around a, uh, a session crossover particularly London it's a great opportunity for um, you know the institutions the, the, the banks and what have you to manipulate to, to you know uh, to shape people out of trades but once we've got over the nonsense of the of the London Open once things have uh, begins to settle down we've gone through the levels um, you know, this is what the Renko does. This is a really yeah, continuous. Yeah, and uh, and what we'll do is we'll spend maybe a session looking at uh, the non-time based charts, particularly Renko, because as I said, they can teach you so much about uh, trends, about congestion phases, breakout trading, reversal trading. It really does have an, a lot of lessons. And most important of all, I think, with Renko, what they do is yes, they signal. Potential entries and exits, but much more importantly, is they help you to keep you in a trade. And let's just quickly—I'm just going to finish on this 
on the 10 minute because I want to see if that's actually broken through that level. Uh, yeah, it's it's gone through the, the R3. What often happens, it will go through. Sometimes it will come back again. It's just the way these levels work. I can see on the uh, on the CSI quickly again. I'll pass over to David. Yeah, we've still got the uh, the pound rising and the dollar falling. So we just have to sit and wait. I'll just pass back over to David.